हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर श्रीकांत वर्मा एम बी बी एस एम डी एनाटमी फैकल्टी ऑफ एनाटमी एट टीम मोटिवेशन सो हियर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एनाटमी क्वेश्चन आज इन एफ एम जी दिसंबर टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन ऑन रिकॉल बेसिस ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कैन यू सी दिस क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन इज इन मेल एडम्स एप्पल इज ड्यू टू ऑप्शन आर एपिग्लॉटिस थायराइड कार्टिलेज क्रिकॉर्ड कार्टिलेज एंड हायड बोन सो try to identify actually what is the adams apple when we extend the neck so in the neck the most prominent midline structure you can feel the anatomy in your own body that most prominent structure is known as the adams apple okay why it is formed yes we know it is formed due to the thyroid cartilage answer is thyroid cartilage so we are going to see what is this yes can you see this is the image of the larynx from the front side okay so try to identify the various bones this bone is known as hyoid and this cartilage is the thyroid cartilage which is the cartilage of the larynx below the thyroid there is the cricoid cartilage so this is the cricoid cartilage and yes this lower part of the cricoid cartilage is the trachea actually what is the larynx the upper part of the trachea is known as the larynx which participate in sound production getting the point okay so now see here that this thyroid cartilage at the midline it produces the most prominent part this most prominent part is known as laryngeal prominence also it is known as the adams apple getting the point yes this is the another side view of the same thing yes above bone is the hyoid bone below bone is the thyroid cartilage below to this thyroid there is the cricoid cartilage and this part is indicating the trachea so most prominent part of the thyroid cartilage is known as the adams apple or laryngeal prominence getting the point what happens in the male and in the female during the growth due to the effect of the testosterone because in the males they are having the too much amount of the testosterone so two lamina are having at a acute angle okay so due to this acute angle this laryngeal prominence becomes more prominent more growth in males but in female it is less so these are the few data can you see this angle is 90 degree too much acute in males due to the effect of the testosterone while in the female it is only 120 degree getting the point okay that's why due to the acute angle this becomes more prominent so this laryngeal prominence or adams apple is located in thyroid cartilage getting the point okay see here other data that in the male the vertical length is 44 mm while the transverse diameter is 43 mm antero posterior length is 36 mm in the males while in the female the vertical length is 36 mm and transverse length is 44 41 mm and antero posterior length is the only 26 mm these are the just few data because this question has been recently asked so you have to study the larynx topic for the further more exams now we are going to discuss the next question the next question is which of the following muscle is known as safety muscle of the tongue safety muscle of the tongue options are genioglossus hyoglossus palatoglossus and the styloglossus so we are going to see what are the various muscles of the tongue you can prepare the list write down muscles of tongue these are two types one group of muscle which is inside the tongue okay they are totally restricted within the tongue tissue that's why these are known as intrinsic muscles of tongue while the another group which is outside the tongue they are known as yes extrinsic muscle of tongue these muscles are coming from the outside of the tongue and inserting within the tongue tissue that's why extrinsic muscle so what are the intrinsic muscle we are going to draw one diagrammatic presentation suppose this is the tongue mid sagittal section so one group of the muscle which is running at the upper part 
superiorly with the long course that's why these muscles are known as superior longitudinal muscles while another group of muscles they are running on the inferior side of the tongue okay because these are also longitudinal in course that's why longitudinal muscle but at the inferior side that's why these are known as inferior longitudinal muscle another group of muscle that are running with the vertical course this is the diagrammatic presentation so these muscles are known as vertical muscle while few other muscles they are running transversely horizontally but when we are cutting the tongue then when you are looking from the lateral side it will appear just rounded in nature that's why another group of the muscle that is the transverse muscle which are shown with this rounded diagram so these are the transverse muscles so these are four intrinsic muscle but what are the extrinsic muscles yes again there are four extrinsic muscles these are coming from the different part of the head neck face region what should be the name yes one muscle is coming from the styloid process to the tongue that's why it is known as stylo glossus break the name stylo means styloid process glossus means tongue next muscle is coming from the palate to the tongue that's why what should be the name yes this is known as palato glossus next muscle is coming from the hyoid bone it is taking origin from the hyoid bone inserting into the tongue that's why hyoglossus and one more muscle that is coming from the genian tubercle of the mandible this is the mandible and on inside there are the four genian tubercle two superior and two inferior okay so one muscle is coming from the genian tubercle superior genian tubercle to the tongue that's why this muscle is known as genio glossus we know from our physiology practical that this genio glossus muscle it helps in protrusion of the tongue so this is another mcq protrusion of tongue is done by the genio glossus and you know another mcq that this all the muscles develops from the occipital myotome occipital myotome mcq or you can say occipital somites and the nerve of this occipital myotomes is 12th cranial nerve so this is another mcq that's why this all the muscles are supplied by 12th cranial nerve mcq okay except what is the mcq yes palatoglossus because this palatoglossus is also the muscle of the palate it is the muscle of the palate also it is mainly the muscle of the palate that's a palato and also it is the muscle of the tongue because it is taking insertion into the tongue that's why glossus so because it is the muscle of the palate that's why it receives inner innervation by the nerve of the palate that is the pharyngeal plexus that is the best answer if not given then you can mark also the palato vago accessory complex you can mark also the vago accessory complex and if it is not given then you can mark also the 10th cranial nerve getting the point so these are the various mcq now we are going to see which is the safety muscle of the tongue okay so try to observe which is the safety muscle of the tongue we are going to see one image yes can you see this image this is the mandible and in this mandible part here there is a genian tubercle okay there are two superior genian tubercle and two inferior genian tubercle this is the mid sagittal section look at this diagram this muscle is taking origin from the genian tubercle and taking insertion into the tongue okay so when this muscle will contract try to observe the direction of the muscle fiber when this muscle will contract it will pull the tongue in this direction so ultimately the tip of the tongue will come forward so genio glossus is responsible for the forward pulling of the tongue that is the protrusion of the tongue getting the point now see here that this genio glossus is pulling the tongue forward so it is also preventing the backward falling of the tongue it is also preventing the backward of the falling backward falling of the tongue and on the back side there is the position of the larynx larynx as we know it is the sound box it is it help in the breathing there is a trachea okay so it is preventing the backward falling of the tongue over the larynx over the trachea so in this way it is preventing the choking and the death if there is the choking 
if there is the blockage of this larynx and the trachea there is a difficulty in the breathing and there will be the choking and the death so which muscle is preventing backward falling of the tongue which muscle is preventing the choking by blockage of the larynx or trachea answer is the genioglossus that's why this genioglossus muscle is known as safety muscle of the tongue so in this question yes our answer is a genioglossus so now we are going to deal with the next question correlation of the anatomy with the radiology radiological anatomy here we have to identify this marked structure in this given hip bone pelvic region so this is the entry superior iliac spine entry inferior iliac spine ischial tuberosity or the pubic symphysis so one by one we are going to observe okay can you see this image okay these are the parts of the hip bone okay here you can see the red color bone is the ilium the yellow color part is showing the pubic bone the green color part is showing the ischium bone so there is the union of the three bone which makes the hip bone now on the posterior side this is the sacrum and the terminal part is the coccyx so the joint between the sacrum and the ilium is known as sacroiliac joint and the fusion the synovial symphysis joint between the two pubic bone is known as pubic symphysis you can see there is the one large foramen through which the obturator foramen through which obturator nerve passes that is known as the obturator foramen okay now see in this hip bone the uppermost thick ridge is known as the iliac crest and on the entry side the spinal like structure is known as anterior because it is located on the entry side superior because at the upper part of the ilium bone it is part of the iliac bone that's a iliac and it is spine like structure that's a anterior superior iliac spine and in the same way this part is known as anterior inferior iliac spine now we are going to see the lateral view of the hip bone can you see this is the lateral view of the hip bone in this lateral view how will you identify the lateral view due to this horse shoe shaped cavity acetabular cavity acetabulum where the head of the femur articulates now this yellow color bone is the ilium okay and here the red color bone is the pubic bone while this part is the ischium getting the point and here there is a one large foramen is present which passes the obturator nerve that's why this foramen is known as the obturator foramen getting the point this is the anterior part and here is the posterior part so on the entry part there is the one bony projection on the front of the iliac crest that is known as the anterior superior iliac spine and just below to it anterior inferior iliac spine and on the posterior side you can see there is the one big notch that is the greater sciatic notch and on the another notch is present that is known as the laser sciatic notch in between these two there is a one very important bony prominence is located that is the ischial spine over which pudendal nerve lies which is used for the pudendal nerve block okay so these are the various information yes you can see there is the ischium and one bony hard part is present in the ischium that is the ischial tuberosity this ischial tuberosity is the part where all our body weight lies during the sitting position okay so these are the various parts now we are going to observe in this radiological image the same facts this is the front view of the pelvic region so can you see at the center you can see the lumbar vertebra the lower most is the fifth lumbar vertebra okay now see here will be the location of the sacrum compare with the normal anatomy and at the tip of the sacrum there will be the position of the coccyx now see on the each side the hip bone is there so this is the iliac crest and the front bony projection is the anterior superior iliac spine and just below to it there is the anterior inferior iliac spine now see here is the pubic bone and these two pubic bones are uniting together and making the symphysis joint pubic symphysis and the foramen which is located here that is definitely obturator foramen on the posterior side the ischial tuberosity will lie now try to identify here is the acetabular cavity which is articulating with the head of the femur then there is the neck of the femur then there is a greater trochanter and the laser trochanter of the femur getting the point and here between the sacrum and the ilium bone there is the one 
articulating part is there that is a sacroiliac joint now after this knowledge can you see here okay this arrow now try to identify the structure yes here will be the lumbar vertebra and this is the shadow of the sacrum okay so this is the ilium bone so uppermost part will be called as the iliac crest yes this will be the iliac crest and the bony projection just in front of the iliac crest that is the anterior superior iliac spine and this will be the anterior inferior iliac spine okay where is the pubic symphysis this part the fusion between the two pubic bone that is showing the pubic symphysis and the gap the foramen is the definitely obturator foramen okay and here in this image you can see this part is showing the ischial tuberosity what are the other parts this is the head of the femur within the acetabular cavity this is neck of the femur here is a greater trochanter and a small projection here that is a laser trochanter you can see in the opposite side okay so in this question the answer about this marked structure yes which structure is marked here you can see this particular bony prominent is marked that is the anterior superior iliac spine very clear from this discussion so now we are going to solve the next question next question which muscle tendon is involved in patellar tendon reflex as we know from the physiology that this patellar tendon reflex is also known as the yes knee jerk so which muscle is involved yes quadratus femoris quadriceps femoris quadratus lumborum and the all here the answer is the quadriceps femoris yes what is the quadriceps femoris quadriceps femoris is nothing break the name quadri means four seps means head and situated in the femur region femoris so this is the muscle which is made by the union of the four muscle which four muscles unites together answer is the first muscle is rectus femoris another muscles are vastus medialis vastus intermedius and vastus lateralis so these are the four muscles these all the four muscles unites together and forms the common tendon that is known as the ligamentum patelli and then this takes insertion into the tibial tuberosity of tibia okay within this tendon another important mcq that which sigmoid bone which largest sigmoid bone of the body is ossified that is the patella okay so through this discussion we have formed many question now see when this muscle contracts there is the extension of the knee and the extension of the knee is oftenly done by the footballers that's why this muscle is also known as footballers muscle mcq this activity is done for the kick also that's why this muscle is also known as the kick muscle mcq so we are going to see the image based practice this is the knee reflex or you can say patellar tendon reflex we are hitting the ligamentum patelli with the hammer and there is the extension of the knee kick movement okay that's why this is the kick muscle can you see this is the reflex pathway as we know from the physiology any reflex pathway is having the five components yes see here we are hitting the hammer at the ligamentum patelli or patellar tendon so here is the activation of the receptor stretch receptors are activating first component now the sensory nerves are going yes sensory nerves are carrying the impulse to the spinal cord through the dorsal root ganglion it is entering into the sensory horn part and relaying into the spinal cord so this is the sensory neuron second component and this is the spinal cord which is the third component of this any reflex especially we are talking about the patellar reflex now there is the motor neurons which are carrying the impulse to this muscles yes this impulse is again reaching into the 
quadriceps femoris yes this is the quadriceps femoris muscle union of the four muscle and they are causing the contraction so this is the fifth component motor neuron is the fifth component while the effector muscle is uh, sorry this motor neuron is fourth component while these muscles are the fifth component look here observe here this motor neuron are supplying the quadriceps femoris which are extensor so when this muscle will contract when there is a contraction the knee will move in this direction but also the impulse is coming to the posterior compartment muscles these will get relaxation that's why again they are helping in this reflex so which muscle is mainly participating given in the option yes quadratus femoris quadratus means quadrangular in the femoral region better to say in the gluteal region so this is the quadratus femoris not the quadriceps femoris this is the muscle which is located just below the obturator internus and two gamelae piriformis you can say piriformis then obturator internus with two gamelae and below them there is a quadratus femoris in gluteal region so this is not participating in the patellar tendon reflex next is the quadratus lumborum as the name is suggesting it is a lumborum it is located in the lumbar region getting the point okay so it is located on the posterior relation of the kidney not related with the patellar tendon reflex and all never this all option will be here will be the answer so what is the best answer what is the correct answer answer is the quadriceps femoris getting the point so we are including and we are excluding all the points together now we are going to talk about the next question now we are going to discuss the next question here is the clinical correlation of the anatomy with the ops gynae medicine as well as the pathology the case is a lady presented with the galactoria amenorrhea syndrome and diagnosed with the pituitary adenoma now she has complained of the loss of vision this scenario is related with a option homonymous hemianopia heteronymous hemianopia bitemporal hemianopia or binasal hemianopia okay so we are going to see this question yes can you see this image this is the cranial cavity and we know very well that pituitary gland is located within the hypophysis fossa or you can say cella turcica which is also known as a turkish saddle this is the previously asked question okay so now this is the pituitary gland location here is the optic canal and we know that within the optic canal yes the optic nerve is running and making the optic chiasma just above the pituitary gland so whenever there is the pituitary gland tumor yes it will damage the midline fiber of the optic chiasma now we are going to see the optic pathway and we will call it with this clinical okay see here in this scenario it has been shown that lady is having the pituitary adenoma so remember mcq this pituitary adenoma is most common tumor of pituitary gland mcq which is two types micro adenoma and the macro adenoma if the tumor size is less than 10 mm then a micro adenoma if more than 10 mm then macro adenoma you will study in your clinical subject but in this condition when there is a pituitary gland tumor then there is a proliferation of the cells of the pituitary gland what are the cells of the pituitary gland thyrotrophs corticotrophs lactotrophs etc okay so these all the cells are getting proliferation and this all the cells are doing more and more secretion so among this there is the one cell that is the lactotrophs okay so these lactotrophs are also proliferating so these will cause increased synthesis of the prolactin hormone due to the increased synthesis of the prolactin hormone there is the condition in which increased synthesis of the milk that is known as the galactoria okay and we know from the ops gynae whenever there is the galactoria condition increased milk synthesis like in condition of the pregnancy there is the amenorrhea also no ovulation is seen so amenorrhea so this classical condition is the galactoria amenorrhea syndrome getting the point it occurs due to the pituitary adenoma now see if there is the pituitary adenoma 
Suppose this is the pituitary gland and just above the pituitary gland, there is the optic nerve and the optic chiasma. Okay. And we know that lateral side is giving the temporal fiber and the medial side is giving passage to the nasal fibers. Okay. So when there is the pituitary gland tumor, it will damage the nasal fibers. So what will happen? For it, we are going to see the optic pathway. Okay. See here, suppose this is the eyes. Yes, suppose this is the left eye and this is the right eye. Okay, we know that there are the two types of the fiber. On the lateral side, there is a temporal fiber in the retina. And on the towards the nose side, there is a nasal fiber. Okay, so these are the two types of the fiber. Now, the nasal fibers are coming as well as the temporal fibers will also come. But the nasal fiber crosses to the opposite side while the temporal fibers are coming, but they will not cross. Getting the point? Okay. So these are the direction of the fiber. So try to understand. This is the temporal part while here is the nasal part. And these two parts are uniting together to make the optic nerve. Yes, you can say that this is the retina. Now, this midline structure where these fibers are crossing, that is the optic chiasma. And as I told you, just below this optic chiasma, there is the location of pituitary gland. Suppose this is the pituitary gland diagrammatic presentation. Now, the optic chiasma is continuing later as the optic tract. So, this is the optic tract. Now, see here, these optic tract fibers are going further and they are relaying in the mass of the diencephalon that is known as meta that is known as the lateral geniculate body. Suppose this is the lateral geniculate body okay now here the fibers are ending i am just drawing the simple image there are the more detail about it but we are drawing the simple image and suppose this is the occipital area okay this is the brain occipital area so from here the nerve fibers are coming and they are radiating in the visual area okay so these parts, these radiations spreading like the fan, okay, these are known as the optic radiation which are ending at optic area, area number 17, primary visual area. Also from here the impulse goes to the secondary visual area that is the area number 18 and 19. So this is the optic pathway. So now correlate with this clinical scenario that if there is the pituitary gland tumor, then nasal fiber will cut down. Now see, these temporal fibers observe the nasal side of any object while these nasal fibers, yes, Temporal fibers, they observe the nasal side while the nasal fiber observe the temporal side. This is the way how you study in physiology as well as the in anatomy. So, this is the way. Now, see here, if there is a damage to this nasal part, okay. So, this part and this part means the temporal side. This is the visualized area of any object. So, this part is known as nasal part of the object and this is the temporal part of the object. Same phenomena here. Okay. Same phenomena is here. So, here is the nasal part while here is the temporal part. Now, try to observe that if there is the damage to this nasal part, so the nasal fibers are getting damaged. So when the nasal fibers are getting damaged, so the temporal 
nasal fibers are getting damaged so the temporal part of any object will not be visualized so if any patient will observe any object so what will happen yes the field of the vision if he is looking any object we know with the physiology that there is the binocular vision this center part is coming from the nasal fibers nasal nasal vision okay this is the central vision while this is the temporal part yes this is the temporal part temporal part are seen by the nasal fiber while the nasal part central part is seen by the temporal fiber okay because the nasal fibers are getting damage yes what i'm telling you nasal fibers damaged that's why temporal part will not be seen because nasal fibers observe the temporal side of any object so here will be the darkness so what should be the name of this condition this is known as by temporal both side of the temporal region half only part is not observed that's why hemi enopia enopia means loss of vision hemi means half so by temporal hemi enopia will occur in case of the pituitary adenoma related with the galactoria amenorrhea syndrome okay so again come to this question answer is the yes by temporal hemi enopia now see here this by temporal hemi enopia is also known as tubular vision in which we observe the only center part so the vision becomes tube like tubular like the peripheral part is not observed okay so here the answer is c